After studying the various types of irrigation, let's move to the second objective that is various techniques of irrigation. <music> or in which mode we can apply the water to the crops so before selecting or before adapting any any irrigation techniques irrigation water techniques irrigation engineer must evaluate the following factors the basic requirement for the adaptation of any irrigation method should fulfill the all the points that the method should be such that uniform water distribution with as small as 6 cm water depth applications can be made for light irrigation at the same time it should afford heavy uniform application of 15 to 20 cm water depth it should allow the use of large concentrated water flows for reduction of conveyance losses and labor cost it should be suitable for use with economic conveyance structure so before adapting or before selecting any technique of irrigation the irrigation engineer must fulfill all the requirement so the good irrigation method results in increased yield and conservation of resources with soil productivity maintained and water utilized economically so let's start with the techniques of irrigation our first technique or mode of application of water is wild flooding or it is also called as a free flooding you can see the picture through the main ditch we can divert the water from the natural resources and it can be diverted through the main ditch again this main ditch is divided into a subsidiary ditches so the water can be divided or can be discharged through the subsidiary ditches and you can see there are the some feeding points are treated at the subsidiary ditches so through these subsidiary ditches water is allowed to flow on the land and this land or this agricultural field is divided into a number of plot or laterals so the water can be uh, flooded or water can be discharged successfully all over the surface of the plot so let's uh, start with the discussion of the wild flooding see in this method ditches are excavated in the field and it, it may be on contour or up and down of the field water from these ditches flow across the field after water leaves the ditches no attempt is made to control the flow by means of levee since the movement of water is not restricted it is called as a free flooding or wild flooding it is suitable for the close growing crop it is suitable for steep slope also this method may be used on rolling land where border check furrow is not suitable as well as the uh, this method of water application can be used both for flat land and uh, relatively steep land also the alignment and spacing of the laterals depend upon the type of the soil and topography of the land if the slopes are steeper then the closer spacing of lateral is required similarly the closer spacing is required for relatively more permeable soil the for la- flat land and for relatively less pervious soil the spacing of a lateral may be increased normally the spacing of the lateral that is the, the spacing between the two plot may vary from 10 to 
0.50 meter however uh, this method is uh, more suited for the irrigation field containing medium type soil and having slope ranging from 1 in 100 to 1 in 300 so the flooding means for there is a no restriction on the movement of the water there is a no control of move, uh, of the discharge of a water once the water is reaches at the lower end or once the water is fulfilled to cover the surface of the plot then and then only water may get stop so this is the wild flooding or it is also called as a free flooding our second technique of irrigation is border strip flooding you can see the image here also through the main ditch the supply is received in the supply ditch and you can see there is again outlets are provided at the uh, head of the certain land or at the head of the plot so this plot can be divided and this plot can be uh, uh, separated by the borders so that the advancing sheet of the water covers the entire width of the strip so this plot is divided in a rectangular shape with the levees or the borders and this borders height and the alignment of this border is high so that there is a no overtopping of a water may occur so after supplying and after discharging the water from the uh, inlet and or at the uh, starting point once it reaches at the lower end then the water supply is cut off so in this border supply method land is divided into number of strips separated by low levees that is called as a border hence this method is called as a border strip flooding method then reaches between the border should be sufficient height to prevent the overtopping during the irrigation water is meant to flow from supply ditch or main ditch into each strip water flows slowly towards the lower end and infiltrates the soil as it advances when the advancing water reaches the lower end of the strip the supply of water to the strip is turned off size of supply ditch depends upon infiltration rate of soil and width of a strip the length of a slope varies from 0.2 to 0.8 percentage and the the width of the series or the width of the strip is generally having 10 to 20 meters and the length of this strip is 100 to 300 meters so the border strip should be level crosswise this the uh, uh, land between these two borders or the when the land is divided by this border this land should be properly leveled this method is especially suited to forage crop its advantages being that for a relatively low investment a system can be developed which can afford the highest irrigation efficiency and lowest labor requirements with the highly mechanized farming large area can be irrigated within a short time by border strip method the length of a border strip depends upon how quickly it can be wetted over its entire length so this is about the border strip flooding method thank you